I'm an associate research scientist for the University of Michigan. I work at the biological station and I also am part of the Northern Institute of Applied Climate Science. Forests capture and store carbon by photosynthesis. Ultimately, the way that carbon gets from the atmosphere into forest ecosystems is through the leaves of trees. It's that carbon fixation, it's the removal of CO2 from the atmosphere and the conversion into solid carbon, whether that's soluble sugars inside the twigs and leaves of a, a tree, it can be stored carbohydrates, it can be the stuff of wood, the structural carbohydrates that make a tree a tree. A lot of that carbon gets pumped below ground to roots, to associated mycorrhizae, the fungi that associate with most every tree in the temperate forest zone. Um, and over time, through the, the internal recycling of carbon between trees and soil, uh, there is a gradual buildup of carbon in the soil itself. This is from roots that die. A, a new root, when born, does not live forever. It lives in, in this forest from one to three years. Uh, it'll die and become mostly CO2. It'll mostly decompose and go back to the atmosphere, but some fraction of that that fine root or a fraction of the carbon that goes to the fungal tissues surrounding the root in a mycorrhizal relationship will lodge within the soil and can become stable soil organic matter. To measure carbon in a forest ecosystem is not, um, it's not technically difficult. It's uh, logistically difficult, it's time consuming, um, but carbon is, to say it simply, it is the stuff of stuff in a forest. It's wood that you can knock on in a tree trunk. It's the black in the dirt of a rich topsoil. Carbon is something we can sample by uh, going out and measuring the diameter and height of trees and then knowing the tree species and its wood density and carbon content. It's a math problem. It's a little bit harder with the stuff that's below ground. We can do more work um, if we take cores of soil. We can take pipes into the forest, pound them into the ground, remove the soil, sieve out the roots, uh, and, and um, ultimately analyze the carbon content of that soil by combusting it. So we can take a sample like uh, a topsoil and generally know that by its darker color it has more carbon and we can quantify very precisely the concentration of carbon. Deforestation is one of the ingredients in the loss of our forest carbon sink nationally. It's one that is projected to become an increasing share of the problem, especially as we approach the middle part of the 21st century, is the loss of actual forest land area. I mean, when you remove the tree cover uh, and convert something to a farm field or to a neighborhood, you remove the part of the ecosystem that's actively removing and storing in woody biomass the carbon from the atmosphere. My research collaborators and I on, on one recent project, we wanted to put a number to the carbon benefits of reversing forest loss. We wanted to look using existing data both nationally for the whole continental U.S., but then also to drill down on specific ecoregions. We wanted to use data to find out, can we account for how much of this forest carbon sink that we enjoy, whose benefits we um, acquire through the regrowth of forests, how much of that is due to soils, and specifically to uh, the reestablishment of forests um, onto formerly cultivated lands. And also the other type we looked at was reforestation of forests. Since in this climate, this disturbance frequency, this new normal we're entering, it's not necessarily a given that you'll get forest back or that you'll get the forest back that um, is desirable from an ecosystem services point of view, um, that it, it can take management and that includes the planting of trees. So we looked at uh, reforestation on formerly cultivated soils, nationally and then within ecoregions, and we looked at reforestation of forest land and assessed how much carbon that speaks to. And nationally, what that equates to over the next century is one or two billion metric tons. 
one or two billion tons of carbon from the atmosphere into the soils of our nation due to existing reforestation. We quantified existing reforestation. It's happening anyway. Uh, it's good to keep it happening. Let's not sacrifice the evident carbon gains that we calculated um, by putting some of these marginal lands back into agriculture, for example. If just by existing efforts we're getting 10 or 20 percent and we could do 2 billion tons in a century, what if we could do 15 percent more reforestation? Just a little bit of increased effort, especially in targeted places. We could do a lot more if it were a national priority, an agency priority or private sector priority to get trees on places where they can sequester soil carbon.